Thank you very much. Uh, very good afternoon to all. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Actually, um, I was contacted yesterday and I said I wouldn't want to be in the panel, but uh, they just wanted to share my research on uh, child marriage. So I will share with you, um, of course, the issue of child marriage uh, has been there for a while. And I think some years back, we have a 12-year-old, a 45-year-old uh, man marrying a 12-year-old. And I do know from uh, the marriage was actually annulled uh, by the Sharia court later. But um, this suddenly, we, um, we have another case of an 11-year-old marrying a 42 year old and uh, the one thing difference about that it's being done uh, in Thailand <laughs> and, and um, last week I think um, we saw it in, in the paper that this man was actually fined uh, 1,900 but my, I always, uh, my question we were just talking with uh, Dr. Halima uh, whether the mar was the marriage valid in the first place and the man was only um, uh, penalized because uh, he conducted the marriage uh, out of uh, without the permission of the court but anyway child marriage has been a great concern we're talking about child marriage between children I mean these are the definitions I'm not going to go through that and and CRC and and child marriage um, these are uh, child marriage per se is not referred in CRC but related um, article on uh, child marriage uh, article 1 article 2 and article 3 and uh, CEDO and child marriage we have this in un under article 16 which actually uh, specify um, in relation to same rights to enter into marriage and then uh, of course article 16.2 actually prohibit um, uh, engagement or, or getting ch young children to be engaged and it, it should not have any effect but if you look at that in Malaysia itself uh, we, we still have laws on betrothal and you can even sue in court if there is a breach of promise to marry um, not many cases now, but it is part of our legal system. And uh, child marriage, um, uh, uh, marriage actually violates the rights of a girl to be free and from all forms of discrimination, inhumane and degrading treatment and slavery. Child marriage often means a girl's uh, life, certain sexual and economic servitude. And, and of course, uh, when we, uh, Dr. Farah, were talking about um, underage, um, uh, statutory rape, you know, uh, while certain uh, type of uh, sex uh, uh, con contributes to statutory rape, but some act um, with the same uh, age girl will be uh, unsanctioned because it's called marriage. So th these are the things that we, we need to look at. And the implications of child marriage, these are the violations of child children, the, the child's right, uh, social consequences, you this is from my research. We, we have done this. Um, we were commissioned by uh, UNICEF. Negative effect on the girls' educational development, higher probability of divorce and separation, distorted personality development, uh, high incidence of domestic violence, sexual exploitations, child marriage as a cause of death worldwide, low social uh, status, persistent states of poverty, and then under medical thing, health risk, risk of prolonged and obstructed labor, uh, high risk of contracting sexually transmitted diseases, uh, and psychological and psychiatric disorders. Um, now, in our, our research, what we have done is that um, we cover a practice of child marriage in Malaysia within Muslim and non-Muslims, and also in the context of Orang Asli, Bumi Putra Sabah and Sarawak, and also the refugee com communities. Uh, we interviewed children um, as discussed by various Muslim, um, we have uh, an overview of Muslim juries on, on child marriage. And we also have, we look at practice and drivers of child marriage in Malaysia within Muslim and non-Muslim contexts among indigenous and refugee communities. Decision-making practices and trends of Sharia courts in approving the child marriage applications, ongoing initiatives and intervention by government, civil society, communities, states and federal level uh, to prevent child marriage, key bottlenecks or barriers to effective prevention and response to this problem, and also some recommendations. Um, 
Now, uh, what we have done, uh, apart from looking at all the literature review in, in relation to child marriage, uh, we have a roundtable discussion with 14 agencies. We have in-depth uh, semi-structured interviews. We have 130 married children. These are children who have been married well when they were children and some are still married, uh, Malay, Indian, Mipitra, Sabah, and Sarawak, to explore their narratives and perspectives and, and insights. 19 Sharia judges and court officials. We have five government agencies. We have 10 Orang Asi and Mipitra community leaders. We have six muftis and fatwa committee members that we interviews, and we have civil society movement, uh, which we, we uh, become part of our interviews. And uh, we have content um, analysis of 2,143 cases, uh, files of, of the Sharia court and of seven states. Um, now, some of this data, we, we have problems, I mean, as usual in Malaysia when we're doing research, uh, getting data is one of our main problems. I hope the, the, the government will give us hope <laughs> and, and making sure that uh, those data are released so that uh, we, we, we have done so many things to get those data and how we could come up with our conclusion. And most of the time they say, you, yes, you can have the data, but you cannot make them public. Yeah. So, so what we have done was we submitted the, um, the research that we have to UNICEF because we said we're just going to su submit this to UNICEF. But for purpose of publication, there are certain things that UNICEF cannot make it public because that's um, the, the, the agreement that we have with those who actually um, provide us with those data. And that I don't know why, but I think if, if it's for the benefit of uh, everybody, but we should be able to get those data yeah? and to be able to, to, to rely on it and, and to make our uh, research more comprehensive and, and, and you know, um, giving a, the right decision and recommendations. Now, Islamic law perspective, this, these are just going through some of the uh, juries. Um, according to the juries, I mean, I think uh, Prof. Hashim probably would talk about the Makassi Sharia and all that, but from our readings, from our research, according to the jurist, puberty is not prerequisites of a, a marriage to be valid. Under Islamic law, any child can be married off by the guardian while before they reach the certain age of puberty, um, when they are deemed to be physically ready and fit for marriage. The majority of juries uh, was of the opinion that such marriage cannot be consummated until both husband and wife have attained sufficient maturity or puberty. Juries unanimously agree that children are only to be married off when it is in the best interest and not for the benefit of the guardian. And Prophet Muhammad's marriage to Aisha is a special marriage and only to be practiced by the Prophet. So, and there's a lot of you, the pro and the cons, and I think I've just saw the Mufti um, Wilaya uh, has also put that in, and that I think is very useful and to understand those uh, perspectives. And these are the narratives, 140 uh, uh, children that were interviewed or participants, respondents that we have interviewed, some of whom were under 18, yeah? 89 participants um, from direct background, uh, ethnicity, gender, religions and geographic and locations of, and economic um, uh, status, you know, statutes, status. All participants married between 12, 2012 to 2016 and under um, uh, age according to the law. Many of them also had children at the time of the interview. The interview focused on participant narratives uh, about the drivers that led them to marry, the justification for their marriage, life, their experiences post-marriage, and support they receive after the marriage. Uh, three common factors from all this that, um, that lead them to, to have, um, con I mean, for them to induct, uh, go into child marriage is that family background, uh, economic family background. Children were no longer attending school and sexual and reproductive health issues. Um, I mean, we can see from a lot of our um, literature review, uh, of course, child marriage, uh, you know, actually uh, deny the child rights to education. But in Malaysian cases, many of the children has already left school. They were not studying, they were doing other things, and, and that's why they end up getting married quite an early age. Now, uh, sexual and reproductive rights, um, 
uh, issues. Sexual and reproductive health issues are also right of a child under uh, CRCs and all that. Uh, sexual intercourse, uh, with th these are the reason why they end up uh, getting married. Sexual intercourse of their, with their partners sometimes resulted in pregnancy. Some participants had premarital sex um, as young as 13 and either with a boyfriend or a casual acquaintance. Uh, some female participants said they had had sex with more than one boyfriend but did not get pregnant while the majority of participants said they had had only um, only been pregnant once and others disclosed that they had been pregnant more than once. Pregnancy was therefore other driver that compelled participants to get married. Uh, the majority of participants did not practice safe sex and were ignorant of the consequences of sexual activities despite claiming to have received advice and information from their peers. The lack of accurate information about safe sex and consequences of sexual intercourse meant that the majority of participants did not take the necessary precautions to avoid pregnancy. The social stigma attached to premarital sex uh, was another reason why um, uh, participants opted to marry. The other one is being responsible. Uh, the analysis of data, they married because to be responsible, a task to be shared by both partners. Uh, this perspective was uh, rooted in the tradition, religion, and values, and some of some of the participants, and um, or the respondents, yeah, and their families upheld. For example, a Malay girl in Selangor married at the age of 15 after being pregnant by her boyfriend, pregnant by her boyfriend, and she was seven years older, uh, who was seven years older than she was. Uh, the girl said that she had no choice. What's done is done. She admitted that she had been unprepared for pregnancy and had decided to marry after she delivered her uh, baby safely. The couple took a DNA test to prove that to a boyfriend that the baby was his uh, and the newborn baby. And the family also insisted that she uh, married. My mom said, just get married as long as, um, as, long as you are responsible. What was unique about the, this case was that the girl stayed in school even though she married and she had a child. She placed the baby with a nursery um, at a neighbor house and then, uh, and then she went to school. This narrative illustrates the concept of responsibility. You know, I read, uh, when we interview people like, oh, okay, she went back to school. And we have cases where um, there's one case, uh, the children did not marry because uh, they are pregnant, but these are children from religious school. So, uh, and they carry on st studying, carry on with their study. So um, now, uh, I, this was a, uh, I, I thought I put a V there, child marriage versus child reproductive rights, because in, uh, it can be seen that child's reproductive rights is one of the driver that leads towards child marriage. Reproductive right must come with knowledge and responsibility. In many countries, children started to have sexual sex relations as young as 10. From our interviews, they start at 13. In the best interest of the child and um, that he or she is given the right to exercise his or her reproductive rights. Um, these are some of the things. And the bottleneck or the barriers to effective prevention or a response to child marriage. The legal provisions uh, of the child marriage in Malaysia. Um, now, the, under Islamic law, I think we, we look at the Islamic law. For Muslims, Muslim can marry um, at the age of 18 for male, 16 for female. And for Muslims, you can marry under that age, under 18 or under 16, but you must apply uh, for uh, the permission of the Sharia court judge. From, uh, so they have to make an application to the Sharia court. And they, um, well, from our interviews um, in this seven um, Sharia court, there is no specific SOP in place in assessing child marriage application in the Sharia courts. Uh, the judges exercise their discretion, assesses the case from Islamic legal perspective. And in that respect, um, you can see that um, when we, again, the, the, the Sharia court was willing to share us the files. And uh, there are some cases that we are very concerned because it's not even through an interview. Uh, 
Okay, and that is, uh, 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 you know, we, we felt that, and we have presented our um, findings to the Sharia, uh, the JKSM, the Jabatan Kehakiman Sharia, and the Jabatan Kehakiman Sharia then reacted in trying to put, uh, they are now uh, having meetings to have the SOP uh, to be implemented and to be standardized, and maybe they could implement it through arahan ketua hakim yeah? uh, that could be done but what we feel, feel is that uh, there's not the same question were asked and some there was no question asked because the parents came in and say we would like to have the permission given and so on and so forth and the civil law is quite clear and the LRA um, non-muslim can marry at 18 and uh, 16 for female um, and for non-Muslim, you cannot marry below the age of 16. Yeah? If you do, the marriage is void. I've been mean, issued right from the beginning. It's not recognized. But if you want to marry 16 to 18, you need to get the permission of the chief minister. And in a way, when we made our inquiries, it, the documents are there. It was all settled and, and it was sent to the chief minister. We have a former chief minister here and we would like to ask him whether he actually <laughs> looked through. Uh, yeah, actually, it's just, it's just rubber stamping. Yeah? It's, uh, because it goes to the chief minister's office and it goes back to the Jabatan Pendaftaran because the Jabatan Pendaftaran only go through. Yeah. <laughs> so someone must have signed on your behalf. <laughs> okay. um, so, the, 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 and that also, and we have the statistics that uh, 16 to 18 actually uh, marry for non-Muslims. We have a lot of cases. The other thing is that for non-Muslims, uh, for Orang Asli of West Malaysia, Bumi Putra of Sabah and Sarawak, they can marry under customary law, uh, and then can, they don't have to apply for permission anywhere and from any authorities, um, and uh, that marriage is deemed to be valid because that the law is an exception to them. Um, the other thing is for uh, Hindus, uh, uh, Indians actually marry under customary law. We are also have cases of Indian marry under customary law, Chinese and, and so on and so forth. But the marriage is not registered, but they wait until they come of age and then they have the marriage registered. And if they have children in between that, that marriage can be legitimized under the Legitimacy um, um, Act 1971. So it, it's like, it, it's no problem for non-Muslim, but for Muslim, it's, it's a real problem. Yeah. And uh, where am I? Okay. Then uh, challenges, many challenges in implementing sexual and reproductive um, health education in national schools um, faced by educators, um, advocates, and policymakers due to lack of government interest, uh, parents' attitude. I, I have to put government interest there because I think we have been talking about um, uh, sex education for many, many years. And same, I, I mean, Dr. Farah and I are probably the only people who say, please don't cane your children at school. And we, we, when, when a, a, a teacher has been brought to the courts, um, because uh, in abusing children, we were the one who said this case must go on, must not be uh, dismissed just like that. And the teachers will come together and say, no, 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 we have to do this because this children is bad, he's a drug addict, blah, blah, blah. I think children are children and, and we must have a special program because from our um, respondents, they seriously do not know about their report. Uh, reproductive rights, and they need. To, we need to have uh, health, uh, reproductive health education, if you, if you call it that way, or sex, sex education as such. And I think parents must be informed that sex education is not to teach children about sex; it's to teach them about their body, about how to respect themselves, and in such a way so that they will be able to be protected. Yeah. Um, Malaysian government initiative, this is from um, the ministry itself, there has been no specific or direct measures taken by any government agencies to curb child marriage as such, but the Ministry of Women, we, we formed a task force in 2013, I chaired the task force, and, and, 
when I we when we presented, and I think that was the last we heard about the task force. And uh, when I uh, when I was doing this, I take back all the information from the task force, and I did ask the uh, Chua, and I said, what happened actually? And we don't know. So we put at the side, no tiada tindakan, yeah. <laughs> Belum ada tindakan. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> um, so I'm also sitting with the ministry as um, ASEAN rep. So we only got a secondary. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh,